So now let's look at the role of New Testament in classical education and relate it to classical education. Of, of course, classical education can be related to the New Testament um, and in different ways. In other words, what is the relationship of classical learning to uh, Christian New Testament-based learning? There's a good deal of parallel themes and teachings, especially in ethics and metaphysics. You know, if you read some of the Stoic philosophers, uh, Epictetus, for example, uh, you see uh, a morality there that is a very close parallel to New Testament uh, teachings on ethics and morality. Uh, when you look at virtue and how we should pursue uh, character traits and a good ethical life and so forth, you see a lot of parallels between what Paul teaches and what uh, Aristotle taught. Uh, they're not exact copies of each other, and I don't even th wouldn't even say that Paul's are are in any way conscious of Aristotle's, but you do see a kind of a parallel theme there. A distinctively Christian approach to classical education sees the New Testament and its claims of Christ as being central, while the classical literature and its teachings kind of revolve around those central Christian tenets. In other words, they, they're, they're supplemental, if you will. Uh, the Nicomachean ethics uh, can be seen as a kind of a model of wisdom that reflects the ethical teaching in Paul. Plato's metaphysics uh, parallel what scripture reveals, that is that there is a supreme being, at least Plato, it's not clear exactly what the good or the news or, uh, is in Plato, but it, it is a supreme being of some sort that structures and guides all and from which all perfections flow that's going to have a deep influence on deep Christian thought later on, especially through Neoplatonic uh, teachings. Uh, so it is common to find harmonies between the New Testament and some classical literature, but there are key differences as well. You can't ignore those, okay? So uh, some of the key differences, of course, you know, especially when you get back to the Homeric passages or the Homeric uh, works where you have multiple gods and so forth, okay? So how does the Greco-Roman worldview differ from Christianity, and how are they similar? The classical culture of the Greco-Roman world yielded a lot of rich wisdom that was nearly unrivaled in the ancient world. Uh, you know, Aristotle himself was kind of like an ancient university in a box, if you will. All kinds of academic disciplines found their home in his philosophy. And our contemporary culture still derives much of its character from classical culture. There are a lot of things that were so valuable there that just became integral to Western civilization. Uh, now, you know, we're in a moment in history here uh, in the 21st century where it seems as if a lot of classical culture is under direct attack, if not all of Western civilization itself. Uh, and so, uh, that's one of the questions we're at now. Are we going to, or, or moments we're at, is are we going to continue some of these classical ways of thinking or are we going to diverge from them and jettison them altogether? So there are many, many cultural components that merit attention if time allowed. Some of those include, for example, from classical culture, the rise of drama and its ethical views of humanity, the practice of recording history and its meaning, uh, many ancient Greek and Roman uh, historians uh, pioneered the craft of recording history. The study and practice of politics and law is also very important. Uh, in, uh, ethics and metaphysics and logic and all kinds of different uh, important contributions to our learning. One could even find a kind of treasure trove of cultural ideas in art, in architecture, and even inventions from the Greco-Roman culture. So understandings of the relationship of faith and reason, uh, this, this relationship are varied among Christian thinkers uh, in the second century and beyond. Again, the church father Tertullian asked, you know, what does Athens have to do with Jerusalem? What does the academy have to do with the church? The idea being that the world of faith and reason are separate and that the academy, the use of reason, has no relationship to the church the world of faith, that they really have nothing to do with each other. So you have attitudes that run from that all the way up to, say, Aquinas later on,
who wants to take faith and reason and unify them together and integrate them. Okay. So we will discuss the intellectual and philosophical aspects of classical culture and note just a few of the key differences. Here are some of the main traditions in the classical world. Uh, the first one would be the materialism of the pre-Socratics, Democritus, Heraclitus, and Leucippus, and perhaps best seen in Epicurus uh, and Lucretius. Uh, Epicurus and Lucretius. So uh, anyway, there we have a materialistic view of the ancient world, the atomists, okay? And so in response to that, Platonism comes along and tries to answer the question, of how things can be the same and yet change. And so there's a part of them that is unchanging, and that is their ideal, their concept, but there's also that, that part that's the material that is changing, okay? Platonism, one of the great philosophical schools of, of ancient world and classical civilization. And then along comes Aristotelianism, a response to Platonism, and in some ways growing out of Plato, his, Aristotle being his student. But Aristotelianism uh, would say that, that the world is a combination of form and matter, but they are forever unified together, that they can't be separated. So universals only exist in the things. Later on, this is going to, this whole debate on how, you, how universals relate to things is going to continue all the way up into the medieval period up to the doorstep of modernity, when modernity will turn its back on that whole way of thinking and jettison it altogether. But there was one other school of thought that I've already mentioned in this lecture, and that's Stoicism. They were pantheists. They believed that the whole world was God and that the whole world was suffused with reason and structure, aka the Logos. Okay. So where does Christianity fit in this? There, well, there's a little bit of truth that Christianity acknowledges. I don't say that Christianity gets it from any of these sources, but there's a little bit of truth with Christianity that it sees some truth in all of these. Christianity does not deny the material world, but affirms the material world. It parallels Platonism in many ways in acknowledging that there is a transcendent source for truth and transcendent source for beauty and so forth, and that would be God. It, it, it parallels Aristotelianism as well in understanding the causes and so forth. There are many, many parallels. Of course, Aquinas is going to go to great lengths to show uh, how Christianity meshes with that. And then even with Stoicism, the idea of the Logos, the idea that God is everywhere. God is omniscient and He is in all things and suffuses all things and all things come from Him. But He's distinct from them. So Christians don't fully agree with the Stoics. So you can see the Christian answer to understanding reality had something to say to each of these different groups, but also had a tiny sliver of common ground that it could stand on, just the way Paul found a little piece of ground to stand on there in Acts 17.